Hey guys. All right. Uh, we're working on the uh, Admiral TV. I uh, made some progress on it, um, more or less cleaning and disassembly and stuff. There's uh, some things I want to talk about, point out. Uh, one thing is a good showing of, or um, I don't know, a good observation of why you never plug something in without looking at it real close. That means pulling the chassis out of a cabinet and looking at the top, the bottom, looking through everything. And then even at that point, if you're going to plug it in, uh, you should have some means of current limiting or uh, way of watching current and slowly bring the power up. So in other words, either a variac with an amp meter and that way you can keep an eye on the amp meter knowing and slowly bring it up or using a dim bulb tester and plugging it in that that way if there's any problems uh, it just the light comes on full full force and nothing's hurt but what I wanted to show you was th this is the radio chassis here and coming out of this chassis uh, is the power to the turntable so it's on this cord here this here and something that I noticed when I pulled it out wasn't if I can get this on video that cord came up through here and is black that's right here that's carbon pathing it's from an arcing right there and where did that come from? Well, what that came from was the cord was knotted here for strain relief on this side, on this side of the chassis, right here, and then they made connections to two points here, and then it went through the chassis, and right where it went through, it had worn through one of the leads. Now this has got full line voltage on it. It goes through a switch that you turn on the phonograph and it'll turn on the power and this goes the motor on the phonograph. But uh, it had over time vibration anything uh, had worn through and then obviously from the markings had then shorted so this is a good reason why you don't just blindly plug something in. You have no idea what what is underneath that chassis or what's going on. So what I'll do uh, is most of the cord is really good shape, and this is just from scraping. Uh, they did a they did round this hole, um, kind of riveted the hole to so it wasn't sharp edged. But it's, it's compressed pretty darn tight, and I can either do one or two things. I could drill that hole out bigger, because trying to find a grommet that size, a rubber grommet, is pretty hard to do. Uh, but I could drill it bigger, but there is this one tab here. It was made in the chassis for a ground point if, if they needed it. And I might get into that. So the other thing I might do is first I will fix the wire. I'll put some heat shrink over this and then I'll put a couple layers at least two layers of heat shrink over both where they go through that chassis that'll give a little more a lot more protection uh, from this ever happening again so anyway that's uh, you know, otherwise the chassis is in, in decent condition uh, so that was one point I wanted to make The other things where I'm at is I've got the cans opened up and I've got my caps for them. I'll be putting these back together. These are the two filter cans, main filters uh, and filter cans for, for the TV. A couple other things. Uh, this is the focus control, wire wound and you will never see it but there is a break right here 
in it. So there's no connection or continuity or resistance across the two outsides. And they were using this side to here, so I was only getting just a small amount of going on right here when I rotated it, and after that it went open. So most likely what I'll do is uh, the standard fix is get some um, copper foil or some sort of metal foil and stick, <coughs> excuse me, I'm kind of fighting with a cold, but stick in between here and the bake light. There's just enough room to stick some thin stuff in there and, you know, keep it fairly narrow. And then I'll make contact cross and it really probably will not lose any resistance. Uh, I, you know, the schematic does tell me what total resistance across is and I'll double check that. If I need to, I can add a, a little bit of resistance uh, to one end, but that'll fix that up and it'll be fine. Uh, seems to be a weak point with Admiral TVs. The other is audio output transformer. Secondary is fine, primary is open. But I do have a, another transformer. It's not an Admiral, it's an RCA. But um, that I can use. It should have the pretty well the same impedances. Uh, it operated off of uh, 6V6 as well as this set. Uh, so I, it, it should work without any problems. Now as far as chassis goes, I'll drop this down here. Uh, I've been uh, doing some cleaning on it. Uh, initially I completely dismantled as much as I could off the top and the main reason was is when I uh, started cleaning it and stuff I started running across a lot more rust than what I initially thought. There was rust up underneath the pan up here where the pitcher tube is. I've got that pretty much knocked down. Uh, some other rust through here that was worse than I thought. The tower sits here. That's what holds your yoke and uh, uh, and focus coil. Well, there's rust up underneath it and along this side here. So I decided that you know the best thing to do is just completely uh, remove stuff and get it out of my way and start cleaning. I still got a lot of ways to go on the cleaning of it stuff but something I wanted to kind of point out about this chassis is uh, the kind of lack of I guess for better words of quality control and I'll zoom in on some of the spots here uh, give me a second I learn get things kind of I'll we'll start on this side. And there's other spots. Do you see these cracks here? And if I um, move this down just a little bit, there's also more on the other side here. That happened when they did the depression. Uh, generally, the standard procedure for making something like a chassis is you run it through several different toolings to stamp out as when it's a flat piece of metal. It hasn't made no bends in it. You stamp out a lot of your openings. Now your real small openings will be drilled. But things like these holes here, which were stamped when it was flat, that, that's obvious because you can see the elongated holes here where there's a, quite a bit of a bend. Well they were initially round but when that shoved down when they put it through the, the die to shove it down, it, it those got stretched. Uh, so anyway, this would go through probably several different stampings. There's a lot of openings in the chassis. And once you've done that, then they would then at that point start making their bends. Well, what had happened was there was the metal had uh, gotten pretty work hardened from all the stampings, getting all the holes stamped into it that, when they start doing uh, things like this, bending, and you, it, it is evident also where the uh, corners of the chassis is, where they're bent here and stuff, some of those spots had cracked. You get these cracks. 
And this was done um, before they plated it because, and I can't really show it in the camera, it won't show up, but in those crack areas, there is copper plating there too. So the chassis starts out as steel, they do all their uh, hole stamping and then they do their forming. And then at that point, then it goes into the tank for uh, plating. They chose not to be concerned about it. And, and obviously they didn't have to be, but it's just something I wanted to point out. It was kind of an interesting uh, thing here. Now underneath, uh, you know, other than just stuff disconnected, the audio transformer sits here. Now let me zoom out. Up in this area here is where the uh, sub chassis for the IFs are. I, it was easier to clean the chassis by just pulling that out. The tuner sets here, and uh, your filter caps are down in this area here. That focus control is right up here. So I, I have not replaced anything yet. Right now we're at the getting stuff out, cleaning, and testing. Now the only thing, two things that really were of note was the audio transformer open on the primary and that focus coil open. The vertical output transformer, blocking transformer, the power transformer, the yoke, the focus coil, and the flyback all test good. Uh, you know, all the resistance are where they should be. I haven't individually checked every IF yet, but most of them are open underneath the chassis. You can look at them and they, they, they visually look all right. I'll, I'll double check them just to make sure. But uh, Now one other thing I ran into when I um, started tearing into this, uh, here's the... Uh, tuner and as you notice it's taken all apart and it's still apart right now because I've got over half about half the resistors need to be replaced now I replaced this guy here but uh, uh, I think you see all three of these for sure are way out of tolerance um, the only one that's this one's out this one's good and that one's good so but the reason why uh, that it's taken apart, besides the fact of testing the resistors, which I wanted to do, because there's you know, some down in here that you need to test, was I noticed when I had the drum in, and when it was all together, as you rotate the drum, it makes contact with these contacts here. And they move. They're spring-loaded. And they move when it when it comes around. The drum has these uh, little spots on it, uh, contacts that are uh, half dome uh, contacts, and as they as it rotates through it, it picks them up. Uh, it shoves up the uh, these here, and I don't know if you'll if I can do this and you can see it you might be able to see it you can probably definitely hear it as I rotate through but I noticed one of them wasn't moving and the reason why I fixed it now but these are just wrapped over pieces of metal uh, just made into a u-shape and wrapped around and riveted. This one was broken off. All that was left was just this back piece and a little bit down here at this rivet point it broke right at the bend or just a little bit above the bend and broke up up right about here. So I had some other metal uh, brass, tin plated brass or I, I believe is might be I'm pretty sure it's brass. Uh, it, I put that, I soldered, uh, tinted this back side, tinted it, and bent it around so it's pretty close to the same shape, and soldered it in place. 
Uh, I have another tuner that is damaged, but it used different type of contacts. It used a it was older and it had little pins that pushed in and out, and they were located as such that when this thing would have been, uh, it's got your uh, detents here, and when it would have been in detent, it wouldn't have been made contact, so I couldn't use those. So got that fixed and now all I got to do is just replace the bad resistors and do some cleaning on it and put it back together. They're not hard to take apart and uh, the most difficult thing was just getting this bent right and getting it so it, it worked just fine. So other than that, that's, that's pretty where, where I'm at. Uh, I did check out the turntable I pulled it out and kind of just did a cursory look of it and stuff. Uh, surprisingly, all the lubes seem to be really good on it, although I did clean up some uh, certain spots and, and re-lubed. And uh, the platter for one, that's bearing and stuff, was not dry, but getting a little dry. And uh, I wanted to make sure the motor, even though it spun pretty decently, I thought it'd add some oil to it. They set uh, the motor bushings are set in their end caps, and then they've got a uh, uh, a piece of material that's around in there, uh, felt like material or, uh, that soak up oil. It's designed to hold a certain amount of oil to always, uh, so you wouldn't have to oil it like every other day or something. Anyway, uh, got it up. And going and even though uh, it's quite old and it has uh, a couple belts and then of course an idler pulley they all seem to be in pretty decent shape so it runs fine and it operates uh, all the mechanisms just fine I had to make some adjustments on it and I still got a little more tweaking one thing I wanted to uh, talk about on it was the cartridge and needle I wanted to check it and there's various ways you can test one. Uh, one is uh, you can check it with the voltmeter. You, know, you just hook onto it and rub your finger across the needle just lightly and see if the, you get a reading. <coughs> and, which works fine. But I took it one step further and I hooked it up to my signal tracer which is just nothing but an audio amplifier and tried it again that way and I got you know good noise out of it so it sounded pretty good uh, so I think the needle the needle looks good and uh, I think the cartridge is obviously producing uh, an output so now you don't have to have a signal tracer or, or anything like that you know one of the things that you can use is um, if you got in your collection a, a, a radio that you restored is operating a lot of tabletop radios back in the 40s uh, and 30s and 40s and some in the 50s had phono uh, inputs on them uh, phono jack inputs and you could actually just plug into those and see if the cartridge is all right that way you could even get the turntable operating it it just takes uh, line voltage to run the motor set it up on a stand or something or in its cabinet and plug the plug from the uh, needle into your phono output and play a record and see if it's working you don't have to get you know your other radio or TV or whatever you know if it's a combo unit like this you don't have to get them all restored to find out for sure if you're going to need to buy a cartridge so the, these are some of the things you can do with stuff Anyway, I can't think of anything else I wanted to point out. Uh, that's just basically where we're at. Uh, cleaning. Uh, it's going to take some cleaning and stuff. I'm not really interested in uh, those rust areas are dealing with uh, paint in the chassis. It's a copper plate chassis. Copper paint can be very difficult to find. You know, something that will match good. And beings that there's a lot of not only the chassis but you have a lot of components you got the high voltage uh, 
uh, enclosure that's copper plated. You've got the uh, tower for the um, the uh, focus coil and uh, and coils for horizontal and vertical on there. Um, that's copper plated and you've got well the uh, piece that closes in the uh, IF cans uh, it's copper plated so if you want to paint the thing and if you're not quite you know if it's not a um, right shade of copper doesn't look quite right then you'd have to paint everything else or it'd stand out and being that most of the rust areas are in a place that once it's all together it's really never going to be seen there's only a couple of them that's kind of visual uh, obvious what I'll probably do is get everything finally fully cleaned up and then I'll just protect them either with uh, some clear um, you know like polyurethane or acrylic or something like that or just put uh, WD-40 on them uh, a thin coating of it and keep them from ever rusting again so instead of, instead of trying to paint them so I think that's that's all I've got on this. I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about. I'll, you know, as I go along, I'll be making several videos of this as I uh, get further along and stuff. So I'll see you guys on the next video, and thanks for watching.